Hi everyone and welcome to this video. Today I am making a pink ombre birthday cake. My first step is to prep my frosting so I'm using a medium cookie scoop to separate my frosting into three bowls and I'm going to leave about the same amount in my mixing bowl for the color white. Once I separate my frosting, I'm going to start with my deepest color, starting with a fuchsia base. I'm going to add a small dollop of that, and then I'm going to add a little more deep pink. This is going to give me a nice deep pink to start my buttercream base. I'm just going to give that a thorough mix until all of my color is even between my buttercream. To create my medium pink, I'm going to take about two tablespoons of my dark pink and add it to another white bowl. This is going to give me a nice medium pink, and I thought it was a little bit light, so I added just a little bit more deep pink. Um, just to get bright enough, make it a little more medium, so that way my light color could really be light. Again, mix that through to your satisfied, and then add two more tablespoons of the medium pink to the next white bowl of buttercream to then make your lightest pink color. Again, I'm going to adjust this by adding a little bit of frosting. Um, I'm going to try to avoid adding any more food coloring because I don't want to overshoot and then have three medium pinks or three dark pinks. So here are my final ombre colors, including the white still in my mixing bowl, and I'm going to start with the white on the bottom of my cake to create my ombre design. I'm aiming for about an inch to an inch and a half of frosting per color, and then I want to make sure that I overlap them when I add the next color. So I'm going to start next with the lightest pink, overlapping it about a half an inch, maybe just a, like a centimeter, um, a little less than a centimeter, um, and just overlapping that color and then continue up with my medium pink until I have frosted my entire cake. I overlap my buttercream when making an ombre cake because it helps me remove some of those harsh lines you get when you're mixing buttercream and colors. Um, so by overlapping it by a half an inch, I have a softer gradient and it makes it look a little smoother in, in the transition between the light and dark colors. Once I've covered my cake with buttercream, it's time to grab my bench scraper and smooth out my cake um, to see where I have any holes. As a reminder, if you're making a cake and you find some major gaps like I have, that's totally normal. Just go back and patch it with buttercream. So I'm using the light buttercream to patch the holes toward the bottom, using the medium buttercream to patch towards the middle, and the, the white buttercream to patch the very, very bottom. And I'm gonna go back to do my top once I frost the top of my cake. Once I've patched those holes, I'm back in with my bench scraper to smooth out any lines that I have. And as you can see, my cake looks a lot smoother. My sides are looking a lot better, so it's time to move on to the top of my cake. I'm using the darkest buttercream to create a thin layer of icing on the top of my cake, and I'm just going to smooth that all the way out to the edge, and then I'm also going to fill in my edge um, holes with some extra buttercream. As I frost the top of my cake, I hold my palette knife flat and use my left hand to turn the turnstile. This distributes the buttercream evenly with that with minimal lines, so that way I have a nice flat top. Once that's complete, I'm going to go back to my bench scraper to just scrape off that extra buttercream and find any last remaining holes. So you can see I have a couple at the top and a couple at the bottom, so I'm using some white buttercream to fill in those bottom holes and then my darkest pink to fill in my top holes. You might have noticed that in my middle layer, my, my medium pink, there are some streaks of unincorporated um, food coloring. That was totally unintentional, but I really loved the like drama it added to the cake, so I kept it in. Um, I easily could have covered it with extra buttercream or scraped it off and kind of reincorporated it. If you are making an ombre cake and you want to avoid the streaks, you want to make sure that you are thoroughly mixing your color into your buttercream. My last frosting step is to scrape the top so I have a nice flat layer. So I'm using my spatula to kind of drag the frosting inwards from the outer layer. Give it a spin, it looks good. Time for my white chocolate drip. This drip is just a mixture of white chocolate and heavy cream and I heated it until it was nice and melted. And then we're gonna do a test strip to make sure that my ganache is gonna run quickly off my cake. And then I'm just gonna keep adding drips along the side until I complete the design. When doing a drip cake, you want to make sure that you're working on a completely cold cake. So my cake was in the fridge for about 20 minutes before I started with my drip to make sure that it was going to set the chocolate instead of having it run completely off the cake. To complete the look, I add the rest of my chocolate to the top of my cake and smooth that out with a spatula to have a nice smooth top. The final step is to just decorate my cake. So I am adding some macarons and some flowers and some buttercream rosettes and swirls just to kind of add extra flair to this cake. Since my frosting and ganache have set, I'm attaching my macarons with some extra buttercream um, just applied to the back of the macaron or as you can see here, piping a swirl and then adding in that macaron on top. To keep my flowers from leaching into the cake, I wrap each flower with some cling film, uh, making sure that I seal the bottom and then wrap that cling film with a straw to make sure it all stays together and then I just press that into my cake. If you are adding things like flowers to your cake, I would highly suggest not working on a frozen cake, but a refrigerated cake. So with a frozen cake, um, that might put up a lot of resistance and you might have a hard time getting those flowers or whatever decoration into your cake. 
um, but with a just a refrigerated cake, it's going to be a lot easier to push those decorations into place without completely destroying your cake. It's important to view your cake from all angles, so you see that I give my cake a lot of spins on my turnstile to see how the cake is looking and where I need to add more decoration. From this back angle, I decided to add a couple more flowers and a couple more macarons. Um, I wanted to make sure that my cake was viewable and looked good from all angles and that I fit the brief. So the brief I received from this client um, or this customer was a pink ombre macaron cake and I wanted to make sure I really delivered that message. And then for a bit of height, I'm going to add some macarons to the top here um, just so that the flowers don't stick out as being like the tallest thing. I want there to be some level as well. I was satisfied with the design, so I was going to go back and add some more detailing, which were these white pearls. These are just white pearls you can purchase from like Wilton um, or like at any type of like baking craft store. And so I went back and I added them to some of the rosettes and then also added them to the end of the drip. Again, really trying to make um, this cake feel special for the person. By now, my cake has been out of the fridge for several minutes, which means that my ganache is pretty soft, so I can push the sprinkles right in there. Um, if you're having trouble, you can always use a little bit of um, edible glue, which um, can be like Tylos powder or sometimes a little bit of water um, that can help you um, adhere your sprinkles to your cake. As someone who has um, perfectionist tendencies, I definitely will tweak cakes until I find that they're perfect. So you can see here I'm adding more flowers, I'm going to add more macarons just to make sure that I'm filling any um, really big holes or really big gaps to make sure again that this cake looks to me perfect or as perfect as I can get it. If you're like me and have some of these tendencies, um, one thing that can really help you not overdo a cake um, or to help you get a better perspective is to kind of walk away for about 20 minutes. So um, between this, I did pop the cake back in the fridge um, and then came back at it with some fresh eyes. So that really helped me decide um, the direction of the cake needed to go and helped me kind of find any holes and fix any gaps and um, really put those last finishing touches on the cake. I'm finally satisfied with how my cake is looking, so my last and final step is to just add some gold luster dust um, to really make it shine. So it's really hard to see on the camera, but I'm focusing on spraying the flowers um, because I wanted those to have a little more life to them. And with that, my cake is done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for sticking around, and I hope this inspires you to make your own pink ombre macaron cake. As always, if you guys like this video or you want to see more of my content, you guys know what to do. And I will see you guys in the next video.